Today's video, which might be a two-part series, is about Galagos Ruins. There were a lot of people requesting this video, so I'm going to show you what I do in regards to magic order, what monsters to bring for each summoner, and how I go about each floor. If you like all my videos and content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. Tip of the day, I got an official Chronicles content creator box from Com to Us. I will do a box opening, but it's going to be a bonus video like on a Saturday. The more you know. All right, Galagos Ruins, it resets every two weeks. Every two weeks, the magic order changes, and the floor order and the stages change as well. That goes for creature elements, bosses, etc. So first and foremost, you just got to look at the magic order. You gotta look at the summoner's damage dealt bonus for this season's magic order, and this one is water. So you just have to know that going forward. When you choose paths, when you have two stages to select, you definitely wanna go towards the weaker element. You also look at your monster's bonus as well, and again, this season is water monsters. And dark creatures HP by 50% is increased for this season. That's actually not bad. Now, these bonuses on all three can be changed at any point in the time. So in the beginning, just go for hard levels for the bonus. If you get stuck later, you can change them. But choosing the right ones is up to your summoner. If you're Cleef, you're going to be in the front line, so increasing damage taken is probably not a good one for your summoner. So it really highly depends on your summoner that you are using. And I tend to try to go for more refined crystal bonuses than anything else. So for Orbia, I would choose something like decreased defense by 50% because I'm in the back line. I'm not really taking a lot of hits. I definitely don't want to decrease my crit rate or decrease my crit damage because there are time limits on these floors. Decreasing precision by 70% is one I'm going to choose. However, you really got to pay attention because if you miss basic attacks, it can wipe you, especially on just the regular creatures. The last one I'm going to take is just decrease HP by 50%. It gives me a gold bonus, not a refined crystal bonus. However, I'm in the back, so I'm not taking as much damage as my front line. I would do these same three as Kina, just because I do want her to do some damage. It just depends on how you have your summoner built. For Klee for frontline, I would definitely not do the defense and HP ones. I would decrease attack. Yeah, that helps him with damage, but also defense does too. I'd rather be tanky doing damage and have a decreased attack. And I probably would even take the decreased crit damage. For the magic order for your monsters, this again relies on who your summoner is going to be. As Orbia, you're going to have frontline monsters or you're going to have supports. So you really don't need precision. You don't need crit rate on your monsters, and you don't need to deal damage as your supports or knights. Orbia is going to be doing all the damage for you in Galagos. Kina and Cleef, on the other hand, are a little bit different. They rely on their monsters to do the damage for you, and it really depends on what monsters you have built, so you got to think about what you're going to be bringing. Is there defense-based damage dealers you're bringing, or mostly attack-based? So you may want to take the decreased defense if you're bringing ranged archers that do damage based off attack. If you bring a bunch of ranged as well, you may want to decrease their HP instead. Because Cleef's going to be in the front line doing all the damage. But with Kina, you're going to need tanks and you're going to need damage dealers. So you just got to think about what you're going to be bringing. Now for creatures, you really got to make sure you know what this season for the creature is going to be. So in particular, this example, Dark Creatures HP is up 50%. So you probably don't want to increase the HP of creatures because when you face Dark Ones, it's going to be crazy. One of the first things I like to do is take the Fire, Water, Wind creature accuracy by 80%. They're going to land in any way. Resistance is stupid. Plus, I'm going to be probably running a lot of supports that have immunity or cleanse because that's what you need to bring to Galagos, which I'll talk about in a minute. Also, because I lowered my precision, I'm probably not going to be hitting a lot of basic attacks anyway, so I'm increasing fire, water, winds, evasion by 80%. 
And then I also picked their precision by 80% as well. I always pick the fire, water, wind buffs for the creatures because this eliminates dark and light. And usually there's always dark creatures in every floor. And when you get to the boss stages, they are always dark and light. So this just eliminates like half. It's like a Thanos snap. Now that we selected the magic order, we got to talk about monsters to bring. For Cleef, you need to bring damage dealers and you need to bring supports. You don't really need frontline monsters because as Cleef, you are the frontline. I always start out with immunity and cleansers. And this goes for Orbia and Kina as well. Even though Kina is a healer, you definitely want to have supports that have cleanses and immunity. So I always start out with immunity monsters like Shushu and cleansers like Lulu. They don't even need to be max level or max awakened because you can use your lower leveled unskilled unawakened monsters on all the stages of the first floor. You use these monsters first to waste their energy before your main monsters. After I choose all of them, then I go into all of my healers that I have left. After you've done this, then you want to bring one movement speed character. This can be Remy and this can be Bernard, one of the two. Then I bring any buff units that I want to bring, such as Shannon, Galley, and Bastet. I highly recommend bringing both Heart Magicians if you have them built, but Light Heart Magician and Dark Heart Magician are both crazy good in PvE environment. Next, you bring some specific Galagos monsters. One is the new One Punch Man collab unit, Raijamum. Next, you can bring Wind Polar Queen, Tiana, or if you're lucky, Light Polar Queen. They are used for higher stages when you want to get your ultimate as much as possible. Using your ultimate can AoE clear really fast. Then you want to bring some damage dealers. Preferably, I would recommend you going ranged damage dealers in Galagos. I would bring one assassin melee unit just in case because you might have to choose assassin buffs depending on what is given to you with RNG. But really, you want to make sure you go for ranged units. If you filled your 30 out of 30 monsters and you still have some monsters that you really truly want to bring, this is when you filter out the ones that you probably won't use and then you bring in others. As you progress, you're going to be getting buffs. This again highly depends on what summoner you are and what monsters you bring to the floors. As an Orbia, you definitely are the main damage dealer, so you definitely want to go attack stats towards summoners. If you're a Cleef, you might want to go with summoner increased defense, or even with Kina just for survivability. Although with Kina, she does benefit from attack as well. Any of these three would work depending on what you plan on doing with Kina and your monsters. You also got to think about what your monsters are going to be front line, so I'm going to have a lot of knights on my team as Orbia. I'm just giving you my thought process on how I pick buffs. Like I said, you always want to try to solo every single stage that you can for at least the first or second floor. It really depends on how strong you are. But if you want to be safe, you can start just bringing in one monster at a time. This can be your lowest power leveled monster. Don't forget about changing runes. We have rune presets that you can just change whenever you want. The best way to go about Galagos is manualing it. In Galagos, it is really, really strong to know when to switch weapon elements for your summoner. For example, Orbia, if you switch to Dark Element, she has a self-sustain on her second skill. So you can throw out the Life Drain and then you can switch to Water, which does more damage. And you still have the Life Drain. For Cleef, you can do this as switching the fire element, getting the heal over time, and then switching to wind, for example, and getting more heals. But if you're running a healer, it's not really a big deal. You can do it either way. You don't really need the weapon switch. You can then stay on the stronger element, which in this season it's water, and you got a healer to back you up. If you want to be safe too, you can kill things, then back up away. If you're not fighting time, you can also back away and gain some mana so you have more burst in the beginning. It's all up to you, but the higher floors you get and the higher stages you get, it's going to get a lot harder. You can be as safe as pulling the big monsters away from all the other adds. It's like World of Warcraft, right? 
I want to choose this mob. I don't want to pull them all at the same time, maybe. I don't know. Look, sometimes you can even pull them one at a time. See, I got one at a time. You can be super safe if you want. These are just tips to get you by so you don't pull too many things at once and get yourself killed. Because once you die, your monsters lose energy, and when you don't have any monsters left, the higher floors are going to be harder. Also, if you get duplicates of buffs, the level goes up on that buff. So before, I got Strength of Life level 1, and it was 7% for every 10% loss to Knights and Cleef. Level 2, it goes up to 10%. So if you have 50% HP loss, you will now decrease the damage taken by 50%. If you can always stack buffs, it's highly beneficial. Also, what I suggest too is using just your basic attack to pull monsters and then running back so that you can hit your skills with multiple enemies. Use your ultimate on packs like this so you do not die. Another tip is waiting for your skill cooldowns to come off a cooldown if your time allows it. You don't want to go into a fight with no skills because then you won't be doing damage and you'll be taking a ton from a big wave of mobs. Merchant floors, you definitely want to go to at least once. Merchant floor will sell a raid material for 100 crystals. Definitely buy that every time. Now again, for boss stages, you may as well just go in with a full team of monsters. The boss stages are harder and you don't want to waste energy. So bring monsters that you probably won't use as your main monsters in floor 3 and 4. You save your best monsters for those two floors. So again, you bring monsters that you have built, put some rune presets on them, choose the stronger summoner element to do more damage because bosses are light and dark, and just go in intentionally wanting to beat it on the first try. These bosses do have the same mechanics as the regular raids. So here's the Endor, so you definitely want somebody to remove buffs or to kill through Endor. And then there's Borbo, only basic attacks. So bring in attack speed or attack speed monsters that do damage with attack speed. Make sure to get out of red stuff, don't stand in them. And if you beat it on the first try, you won't be wasting any monster energy. Floor 2 gets a little bit harder once you start doing that, so I suggest maybe just taking two monsters. A buffer and a healer. Again, in the beginning when I talked about monster selection, as you see, I have a level 5 defense break and a bunch of other debuffs on my summoner. But try to save your main cleansers for higher floors. I can't say that enough. And then you get monsters like this that sleep, and there's nothing you can do. That's why immunity is important too. Just keep sleeping. Now when you get into situations like this where you have two paths to choose and they go in different directions, just look forward a little bit. You can go forward and check the elements of the floors and you say, hey, if I go to the bottom route, I'm going to run into a trap room which are horrible and they're stupid and frustrating. Or there's another stage that I can choose and it's actually wind units which I might not want to take because water is strong in this season. Then you can check the other route and see what might be better and say hey there's dark and fire. So I'm going to take this top route. There are also these ancient Galagon vault rooms. Now before in my original Galago season 1 video, these vaults suck. But I was told they were buff. So let's see if they were. A bunch of spellbook ones, well, you can merge them and craft them now, that's cool. But we got Thousand Year Frosts. These are legendary mats. So it's actually not a bad idea. If you go into these vaults, there may be something you get RNG that's good. Alright, last for this part one of Galagos. Second floor, eight stage. The last boss battle, and we got two Shireklis. Second floor and up, I would just bring your best team composition. There's two Shirekli, so you need someone for the mechanics of the fight. In this example, I'm bringing Light Cowgirl Lauren. She's got buff strip and she has a heal block. After that, I'm bringing Bastet for shield and attack buff. And Konomiya will give you mana back when you cleanse Electric Shock. 
But Konamiya makes this stage in particular super, super easy because whenever you get electric shock on you, you get mana back, which is his heal. When I mean mana back, I mean mana regen, okay? Don't kill me on that with what I said. But really, it's not a race. Just make sure to cleanse the electric shock when you get it. Get out of red circles. You don't want to die from that. One is down and the rest is coming. The more cleanses Konamiya does of electric shock, the more mana regen you get. It's just silly how good Konamiya is against Shrekly. But that's it for today's video. This will be part one of a two-part series where the second video will be floor three and four. Make sure to tune into that one when I get to it. Hopefully tomorrow, I don't know. If you like my video and content, sub, like, ding, ding, a bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.